the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. You are worthy to be glorified in the name of Jesus for the mighty things that you are doing. We honor you and we praise you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You give and you sustain. You give and you sustain. My heart will choose to say, Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Very simple song. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Try one more time. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Everybody, one more time. Blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be the name blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your glory listen to the other part it says you give and you sustain you give and you sustain my heart will choose to say Blessed be your name. Try it now. You give and you sustain. You give and you sustain. My heart will choose to say. Blessed be your name. You give and you sustain. You give and you sustain. You give and you sustain. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the glory. Hallelujah. Walk to seven people and tell them I see you moving higher, greater. Prophesy. Mean it from your heart. Out of praise and return back to your seat. Hallelujah. 
worship team. I reject every temptation. Back to sender. Uh, uh, what is happening again? you in your dialect and sit down. Your dialect is not tongue. Some of you are speaking in tongues. Bless you. Be seated. Hallelujah. This is what you get when you come for koinonia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want us to specially celebrate those who did not get seats and are scattered outside. Can we appreciate them? <laughs> Hallelujah. We apologize. There is no way of measuring people who can come in. We can only do our best. But I want you to know that the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Right? Pick up your Bibles. Let's go to the business of the night. The reality of heaven, part two. The reality of heaven and hell. Thank you. Part two. Hallelujah. Those of you from Kogi State, I return back from your state today. It's a nice place. We went to cast out, tear down, uproot. Oh boy, it's a beautiful place. And you have a lot of fish. Hallelujah. They took us on a little tour. And I saw different people you buried alive. Hallelujah. I didn't have the opportunity to see your king, but we were at his palace. It's a beautiful place. Hallelujah. That's where River Niger and Ben will meet. There must be something prophetic about the state. Don't you think so? Hallelujah. We had a great time there. 
Let me tell you something. One of the reasons why God gathers people like this, aside from soul winning, is to help them learn and understand the principles of the kingdom. Praise God. So if you are coming Friday after Friday or week after week, and the only thing you are coming to do is to watch men of God keep preaching and blessing and prophesying on your life, then we are cheating you and we are robbing you of a glorious destiny. Are you following me now? Any ministry that is not committed to teaching is wasting the time of God's people. The only way you can be established and grounded in truth is when the principles of scripture are taught. So you understand the principles of the word. Hallelujah. That's why we encourage you to come with writing materials. This is a school. So if your neighbor doesn't have anything to write, help him with something to write. And tell him, please next week just come with something to write. Tell him gently. But mean it from your heart. Hallelujah. We started considering the subject of heaven and hell. A very powerful subject. Um, this subject is not taught as much in the body of Christ again for many reasons. Um, we just feel that it puts fear in people and we live in a time and an age where people should not be made to be afraid. Unfortunately, if we do not teach people about the reality of the afterlife, that there is eternity beyond this realm, we will be cheating them. This is the heart of the Christian experience. Hallelujah. So, we started last week, part one was proving to us from scripture that there is a place called heaven and there is a place called hell. Say one more time. There is a place called heaven. In case you've been indoctrinated to believe there is no heaven, it doesn't make any difference. There is. One day you will see one of those places for sure, whether you believe it or not. Hallelujah. So the question is not, will you spend eternity? That's a wrong question. It's the location. You will spend eternity for sure. Hallelujah. And Jesus himself in Luke 16, he began to tell us about the reality of heaven and hell in the parable that he himself gave about the rich man and Lazarus. Hallelujah. How that the rich man went to hell, you know, and then he met Lazarus and so on and so forth. And, and we showed from the scriptures that there is a place called heaven. Heaven is where God dwells. And we established, please don't forget because we are building on it this night. Remember last week we established that there are many planes of heavens. Is that true? That the realm of the spirit is not just heaven. You will need that revelation for what I'm about to teach this night. That you are out of a realm that is not earth does not mean you are in heaven. I mean where God dwells. There is the first heaven. There is the second heaven. There is the third heaven. Paul writes it in scripture that he was caught up to the third heaven. The Bible calls it the heaven of heavens. And that description, it was, it was an ancient way of showing the superiority of something above another. King of kings. Lord of lords. Are you following me now? Servant of servants. Daughter of daughters. So when we say the heaven of heavens, that's the plain where God lives. There is a location right now today called heaven where the throne of God is, where the angels reside, the governing center of the universe. And there is a place called hell. Hell is the place of torment. We established that last week. That hell is a place of torment. Hallelujah. Where all those who die without the Lord Jesus Christ in their lives, they go there automatically. Hallelujah. And then I told us a few things that I think I should remind us of again. Remember I told you that hell is not only a location, but hell is a spirit. Remember? I proved to you from revelations that hell, death, the grave, they are all spirits. 
and i told you that hell is not the final destination for the lost is that true where is the final destination the lake of fire because in hell demons are not tormented in hell satan is not tormented so that cannot be the final place of judgment all right i told you that those who have been lost who have died outside christ right from genesis till today they have not started their punishment yet they will officially start when satan and death and the grave are relocated to the lake of fire the lake of fire is part of god's kingdom are you following me the lake of fire was not designed by satan the lake of fire is part of god's kingdom it was specifically designed for the judgment of lucifer and all those who come into partnership with him so there is a place called hell there is a place called the lake of fire hallelujah and there is a place called heaven i told you the first heaven is this atmosphere the atmosphere that we see where the birds fly the firmament with the clouds and so on and so forth hallelujah and then we have the the the, the space where we have galaxies we have all kinds of things there both the ones that scientists have seen and the ones that they will discover we also have planes in the spirit for instance remember the bible says that when daniel was praying is that true that while the angel was coming from the heaven of heavens into the earth realm interfacing the earth realm was a plane and there was a territory where wicked spirits could function and they tried to stop gabriel the bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against what principalities powers rulers and what spiritual wickedness where in heavenly places not place places that means there are many planes if you understand this you will appreciate what i'm about to teach tonight hallelujah because the part two of this series in the part two i'm going to be considering three great deceptions that the devil has released upon the body of christ as regards heaven and hell are you listening to me there are three great deceptions so right three great deceptions that we are going to be considering this night and let me tell you the truth it concerns you pay close attention god is going to be correcting a lot of error that probably some of us have carried we have taught or we have listened to some of us have written books or read books with this error we are going to be considering this widespread issue of out of body experiences now where people come back with divine revelations we are going to be examining it this night hallelujah praise the lord the first deception that the devil subtly is bringing upon mankind and is is gradually entering the body of christ the church of the lord jesus christ number one is an unbalanced teaching about the concept of heaven on earth an unbalanced teaching about the concept of heaven on earth how many of you have heard that statement heaven on earth now there is a balanced scriptural perspective but there is a dimension to which that teaching gets to that it becomes an error are you getting me now many people in their discoveries of spiritual things as they seek to understand the truth of scripture because the bible says in the end time knowledge shall increase so people are exploring spiritual things and many people are beginning to come up with the concept and and the verse that we use is matthew 6 from verse 10 and 11 the bible says let it be done in the earth as it is in is that true that tells us that god's idea is that earth should be a replica of the heavens and that is very true are you getting what i'm saying now that is god's idea this is why even at the rapture we will go to heaven and we will still return back to a new heaven and a new earth revelations 19 20 and 21 talks about the new heaven he said he, he said come and i will show you the bride the lamb's wife 
he said and he took me and i saw a city a heavenly jerusalem coming down and then it lists the kinds of people who will not be allowed to enter that city however please listen however there is a movement right now that is beginning to build upon this concept of god's idea to want heaven on earth a lot of people are already preaching right now that there is no place called heaven again that the heaven has already come to the earth and anybody who is thinking that he will go and meet god in heaven is wasting his time that is an error from the pit of hell are you getting me now for you to deny the fact that there is a location called heaven where christ is seated remember the bible tells us that stephen in scripture i want to rush are you are you following me now i want to show you the scriptural proof remember when they were about to stone stephen the Messiah? what did he see the bible says he saw the heavens open is that true and he saw who god was sitting on a throne not roaming around sitting on a definite throne and he saw jesus christ standing by his right hand side is that true this also proves the concept of the trinity let me digress a little now if you study theology listen if you study theology there are certain there are certain words that we use that are not in the bible for instance you don't find the word trinity in the bible is that true you don't find the word rapture in the bible are you following me now and certain theologians in their quest to explore truth without the help of the holy spirit have come up with certain things for instance the bible says hear ye o israel the lord our god is one god and a lot of people say forget it there is only one god anywhere the concept of the holy spirit is an error the concept of a father and a son is an error but the word one there in hebrew is plural just like the bible says in the beginning god the, the Hebrew word there is Elohim. Elohim is plural. The singular is Eloha. So in the beginning, God, the entire entity of the Godhead, made, um, you know, they created the heavens and the earth. Are you getting it now? This absence of understanding truth with the agency of the Holy Spirit led men now to say, oh, there is one God. In terms of just one person, there is no Jesus. There is no anything like the Holy Spirit, you know, and so on and so forth and it has brought a lot of error so i am showing you i'm going to show you in two places because scripture says in the mouth or two or three witnesses is any matter established is that true number one proof of the trinity remember in the baptism of jesus christ so we see the word who is the second person of the trinity there and john is about to baptize him is that true the bible says as soon as he came out of the water what happened the heavens were opened again that means the holy ghost came from heaven not from a grave is that true the holy ghost came resting upon him we see another entity of the trinity and there was a voice from a separate entity saying this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him have you gotten that now you go to the book of acts where stephen is about to be matthias and the bible says stephen full of the holy ghost that means the holy ghost was in him is that true he looks to heaven and he sees god the father sitting a separate individual entity and jesus in another throne separate and distinct so don't you let anybody tell you that the concept of trinity does not exist let me give you one more scripture are you ready genesis 1 26 we are going to read the first six words there. Genesis 1, 26. Or the first five words, really. Are you ready? One to read. And God said, let... It didn't say, let me. And God said, let... Let... Let us. Who are the other people? And Eloha, that's the word here. One of the Trinity said, Let us together make this entity called Adam, man. 
Hallelujah. Very important. While Jesus walked upon the earth, he was full of the Holy Ghost. Is that true? Yet he kept talking about his father. He kept talking about his father. He kept talking about someone else that was not him. Remember, he said that it is expedient that I go. For if I do not go, the comforter will not come. And he said the comforter will proceed from the father he will take of what is of the father and reveal it to you hallelujah it's a lot of erroneous teachings so anyway let's go back to our heaven on earth so heaven on earth is a reality in that listen please let me explain to you the concept of heaven on earth as far as the church age is concerned when the bible says in his prayer jesus teaching the disciples hallelujah he said let it be done in the earth as it is in heavens in in other words i want my life my character my culture my value system are you are you following me now the same way it is in the heavens to be reproduced in the earth it does not literally mean take the heavens in all its fair and put there the reason is because there are some things in the earth realm that are not in heaven for instance there are no physical bodies in heaven the bodies in heaven are not made of clay are you following me now the bodies in heaven are made of spiritual substances and lightning for instance the angels the angels were created from light the light that strikes in your thunder that was the material of their creation are you following me now this is why Jesus looked at Satan and said, I saw Satan like light falling. And the Bible says Satan can translate himself as an angel of light. Something happened to his configuration when he fell. There was a corruption that happened to him. So he's no longer in his perfect state. When you looked at Satan at the creation that's before genesis 1 verse 2 when you looked at satan you will see objects of worship was used in his creation he was not only among the highest angelic keda are you following me now satan was the chief of all the angels and because he stood near god there was a rub off of god's glory on him the same thing happened to moses when moses stood near god what happened so imagine how much satan was bright because he had been ministering in the presence of god for a long time it was that brightness that made even other angels admire him and one day he said to himself can i not exalt myself above the stars of god so he had a movement to dethrone god hallelujah and satan alongside other angels leviathan apollyon there's no time i would have shown you from scripture these were the spirits that came together satan did not lead the rebellion alone no single man the bible tells us in the book of revelation that one third of the angel joined satan's party and together they all fell one third of the entire angelic host they are the disembodied spirits we call demons today this is why their operation in the earth realm is illegal are you getting me now because their body was not designed to function in the earth realm please are, are you getting what i'm saying now so they can downgrade themselves this is why there are angels that can appear in human form they are called ministering spirits are you getting me now these are the angels that can appear someone have how many of you have had these kinds of encounters that someone came to or had testimonies that somebody came to rescue another person having a material body but they didn't see the person again these are ministering spirits i've had one of those encounters i've shared it how that one time i was in abuja we had maraba and i came down from a bus and left my wallet there hallelujah when i left my wallet i just realized that the bus had gone it was a busy market i didn't even know how i was going to get that and then manasseh took a bike to run and go and look for the boss person while he was going there was no hope the next thing i just saw a man limping with my wallet and he came and gave it to me that was it 
real solid experience many of you have seen them you thought it was your brother they can carry somebody can call you and talk to you you will call the person back later you say i cannot remember calling you these angels are they are they are the the manifest the bible says are they not ministering spirit sent to minister to serve they that be the heirs of salvation they are the ones that lead people to meetings sometimes they just come and knock and you think it was the same person whereas that person has gone has come for koinonia already some of them come in the midst of this there are times i see them when the lord opens my eyes to see somebody's case then you see oftentimes the moment i see them they stand up quietly and walk they have been around they are here right now scattered around not everybody you see here is a human being be shouting at people <laughs> you see why it's good to be well behaved in church hallelujah so heaven on earth there is a place called heaven and there is a place called earth and listen a time will come when there will be a new heaven and a new earth that time will not happen in the church age are you getting me please don't confuse yourself at all there is the dispensation of the church age in the book of revelation daniel i mean um, um john said i was in the spirit on the lord's day and certain things were revealed to him is that true and he said right the things that were what are the things that were the things that have happened in creation until the dispensation of the church age the things that are are the things that are encapsulated prophetically in the seven churches it represents the seven dispensation of the church age and then from revelation chapter 4 he now told him come up hither and i will show you i want to start revealing to you the things that will happen after the dispensation of the church age so he began to address different churches the church in pagamos the church in smyrna the church in laodicea all of these church represent different physical there were real seven churches in asia minor but prophetically it seven is a number for perfection is that true and it represented the entire span of the church hallelujah are you following me now so john began to see how that there were certain things that happened that after there was the exit and we'll talk about that of the church certain vials were poured upon the earth is that true an angel would blow a trumpet and certain vials will be poured upon the earth one third of the vegetation will go one third of the water will be bitter can i tell you something those things are not prophetic statements they will happen one day in this earth hallelujah praise the lord so an unbalanced teaching of heaven on earth heaven will come to the earth but it's not going to be this kind of earth are you following me look at me i want to say something that is going to shock you now look at me how many of you have heard of the garden of eden now i want to shock you the garden of eden was only brought to the earth as an adumbration of what is going to happen in the book of revelations the garden of eden was not pure earth that's why it has not been found till now it was taken away when man came out the garden of eden is still intact let me prove it to you realize that there were two trees in the garden of eden one was called what the other was called what go to revelations and see the same tree of life there again nothing has happened to the tree the tree is still there many of you just looking at me god sent man out of the garden of eden listen i will tell you that the garden of eden was not just earth material earth alone because look at the beings that guarded it when he sent them out the cherubim and a flaming sword hallelujah 
so heaven will come to the earth but this is after the church is raptured all right so that's number one great deception the unbalanced teaching of heaven on earth the for us now in the church age the concept of heaven on earth is to bring the reality listen to me please of the life the atmosphere the culture and the value system of heaven not to dethrone god and carry the entire throne and relocate it to the earth as many people are teaching now that is an unbalanced view number two this one is a very sensitive one the teaching against the concept of rapture we're going to talk about rapture a bit right now please look up the teaching against the concept of rapture that's the deception number two i call them great deceptions look up please how many of you have had a lot of nice teachings by great people saying there is nothing called a rapture that the rapture will never happen there will not be an exit of anybody out of the earth can i tell you the truth listen to me don't you let anybody deceive you now the men of god who are teaching these things are not fake they are genuinely honest but let me tell you the truth the best of a man is a man are you hearing what i'm saying this is why in ministry the word of god not prophetic experience must become the absolute basis of whatever it is that you teach people you teach people things from the word of god and then support it with whatever relevant experiences that are consistent with the word of god first thessalonians 4 let's answer this question once and for all is there an event that will happen in the world where there will be a massive exiting of people because a lot of people have preached it written books about it some of us have even believed it that there is nothing nothing about the rapture verse 13 this is paul speaking to the church in thessalonica first thessalonians 4 verse 13 are you there but i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them that are asleep so this is talking about death now and the afterlife is that true he's trying to reveal to the church he said that ye sorrow not even as others who have no hope all right verse 14 for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them who are asleep god will bring with him start noticing the construction of this scripture next verse he said for this we say unto you by the word of the lord that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord stop that means there is an event called the coming of the lord is that true the coming of the lord i will explain it to you those outside if you are following say amen unto the coming of the lord all right shall not precede them who are asleep asleep means those who are dead physically verse 16 he said for the lord himself shall do what shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall do what they shall rise first that means there is a resurrection that will happen next verse he said then we who are alive and remain shall do what shall be caught up together with them where in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord it says Where, wherefore comfort one another with these words look up please are you seeing that there is an event the bible says what will happen is that the heavens will open is that true god himself christ now will descend with a loud shout the shout of an archangel can i tell you something only those who are in christ will hear that shout the bible says the trumpet will be blown in zion it said blow the trumpet where in zion sound the alarm on my holy mountain there are people who will not hear that sound are you are you getting me now 
so the bible says she will descend physically all eyes will see him but here it is listen in the first coming of christ his feet is not going to touch this earth are you getting me the bible says he will descend and in a fraction of a second everyone who has ever died in christ whether it's in your bedroom before you built your house or wherever the bible says they will all come out at once with glorified supernatural bodies they will be the ones to be honored first because they died in christ we who are alive instantly as they are being translated this body will be changed the bible says listen it's that's when we say oh death where is your sting because we will now look at our bodies ah this is a material body it was that body jesus resurrected with that's why he entered the inside the room he didn't need to knock he just entered and said all hail all authority in heavens he walked he resurrected as the firstborn among us who are coming before he died he was the only begotten son but he's no longer the only begotten son he's now the firstborn that's why all those who died before jesus were kept in the bosom of abraham they could not have resurrected it will stop jesus from being the firstborn he was the tithe of god are you getting me now the first fruit after his ascension the bible says graves open and other people now followed him are you understanding now so there is an event called rapture whether cnn believes it or not is irrelevant whether freemasons and the illuminati and those who control the media mock and scorn at it whether our brothers and sisters laugh at it can i tell you i see a lot of people mock god with audacity the bible says before the son of man comes it will be as it were in the days of noah what happened in the days of noah he said build an ark judgment is coming when noah was building the ark and calling all the animals some people were laughing at him but the bible says at a certain time god closed the door and it began to rain 40 days this is how it will be as in the days of noah some of you every time you hear these messages you laugh at it because you think it's just some story story that you did in sunday school whether you believe it or not there are some of our parents today they have read books and read books and read god out of their life and they do not believe they say it does not sound logical do you know something let me give you a little preview of what will happen when we check out of this place the bible says even death will run away from people this death that everybody is running away from some people will come to the mountains and say fall on us if a mountain is falling on you now won't you run but the bible says compared to the horror that will happen to the earth people will beg the mountain to come and crush them are you getting me it will happen by that time we are out of this place we will be out of this place many of you are not living like missionaries the bible says abraham sought for a city whose builder and maker is god let me tell you if you do not live with eternity in view you will live a useless life i don't care how many houses you build i don't care how many wives you marry and how many other concubines you have i don't care how many books you read if your eternity is not secured you have all men most miserable let me announce it to the body of christ now there is an event whether you call it the rapture or give it your own tribal name it doesn't matter but i'm saying there is an event a mass exodus of people out of this earth look at me can i tell you something when that event happens the earth is going to witness the greatest catastrophe think about a, a man driving people in a luxurious bus and it disappears the danger is those in the bus will not die 
Yeah. Those who are laughing, keep laughing. Can I tell you something? The Bible will become a bestseller instantly after the rapture. It will no longer be a subject of devotion. It will be the only trusted roadmap into what is next. Philosophers and historians will look for the Bible. My Bible will be there. I will drop it for whoever thinks we are joking. Because we will be with the word himself. The author. Hallelujah. Take this Christianity thing very seriously. When we were very, very small, those who got us saved, let me tell you, they did, they did not work miracles, but they had a depth of conviction as far as salvation and eternal reality is concerned. But right now, what we have in church is that people have pressed to the power dimension. We are working miracles. We have prosperity. Many pastors, many bishops, many people do not even know the prophetic destiny of the church after this life. All they know is where they will buy land for church again. Or where they will do this. Or where they will do that. But they do. What will happen? God will punish you as a man of God. If congregations keep coming to you. And you are not honest enough to tell them about their eternal destiny. I have never, I have almost, maybe there are very few conferences where they talk about the reality of the eternal destiny. Look at the way people live on earth, amassing all kinds of things. When you think of eternity, you will see the folly of mankind. Jesus adumbrated it in the story of the rich fool. It was not money that made him a fool. It was his mindset that he did not have eternity in view. He gathered all he had and found security in it and said, My soul, ah, not my body. Prosperity does not touch the soul. He said, My soul, let this money secure you. And he said, You're a fool. I will prove to you that money is only relevant in this realm. Tonight, your soul will be demanded. There are many people who have sat down concentrating on money, on church growth, and different aspects of the faith. And they just died unprepared. And many of them today are in hell fire. Are you hearing me now? Nobody can plead. There are judges in hell. So who will plead for you? If you die without the lord jesus christ nobody will advocate for you you are going to hell take this seriously can i tell you something some of the people who are in hell had this kind of messages they didn't know it was going to be a serious issue they didn't know they were going to die very soon while it is true that we advocate for longevity not so that we will just sit down wasting our life on the lust of this life but we have a lot of things to do for the kingdom he said i shall not die but not live to raise money live to declare that means if you are not declaring you are not permitted to live are you getting me please koinonia take serious what i'm saying because there are people in hell today as i speak to you from hell they are hearing this message and wondering look at the rich man jesus has given us a window look at the rich man while he was in the, in hell he saw his brothers still behaving foolish like him and he begged abraham he said abraham please i love my family so much can you please send lazarus to come from the dead and maybe when they see him from the dead they will believe him and Jesus made a statement that is still relevant today. He said, whether he comes from the dead, let me tell you, they won't believe him. Because there is something called the deceitfulness of riches. The deceitfulness of this life. I see the way many people sit down. Somebody can even look at you and say, I will eliminate you. Look at a foolish person. You were born by a woman. A seed fertilized your mother to give birth to you. Now you have such an audacity to believe the life of another man is in your hands. Because of political power, 
because of whatever can i tell you something every soul in this earth is subject to the voice of god and when he makes demand of you he will not give you room to package everything you will leave at once Are you listening to me this is a very very important message tonight there is an event called the rapture a day will come i don't know if i will see you but i guarantee you if you make it you will see me because i'm taking my life seriously the bible says paul speaking said let it not be that after i have preached i myself all this apostle thing you do only ends in this realm no demon has called one person apostle are you getting what i'm saying you will not carry your parish to hell or to heaven you will not carry your money whatever you have you won't carry your certificates there's no need never allow westernization and education and social orientation to preach you out of this truth our fathers died the missionaries that came to this country died with this one single message they did not tap into the area of divine health and malaria killed them but at least they died in christ they are resting at the bosom of god today but there are many erroneous teachings many ministers camping around some devilish teachings teaching people that this life they will remain forever here at this state and that there is no rapture oh there is my bible tells me there is i just read it for you jesus is returning are you listening to me his feet will not touch the earth those who have been dead in christ they will arise and we who are alive we will meet with them listen please when we meet with them what will happen we will be caught up in the air and we will return watch this the moment that happens then there will now be an unleashing of the man of sin the one who we now call the antichrist hello planet earth there is the antichrist he's not just a system he's also an entity are you getting what i'm saying do you know why the antichrist ministry will be celebrated because the chaos that will happen to the earth after the rapture it will confuse journalists it will confuse everyone and then he will come in and attempt to stabilize the world right now there is a move the whole move of the world is to bring the entire earth right now into a one wall system and this is the rebuilding of the tower of babel these are already the structures of the antichrist look at facebook something if i slap jakes right now in 10 minutes all over the world the information can go viral welcome these are the machineries that the antichrist will make use of they are not demonic machineries we will use them for the kingdom and check out and leave it for whoever cares about them i don't know what we'll do with the oil of nigeria that we are fighting on when we all depart i don't know if you will sit down inside the oil mine and drink the oil by yourself there are some of you is 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 your your quest for marriage that will take you to hell you don't want to hear anything about god if the teaching is not on how to force your husband to come into your life you are not ready i cannot wait here is my life here is my life i want to give i want to give in serving my fellow man doing the will of god here is my life here is my life here is my life i rather you call me a failure from earth's perspective i rather have a ministry 
where these are all my members and I'm sure every one of them is going to heaven than to have a crowd of people there are many congregations in Nigeria that are on the highway to hell altar call there are churches that the last time an altar call was made was more than one year if they make altar call is for sowing many people receive miracles they come and testify i was healed but they are going to hell i was blessed but i was going to hell they prophesied to me and i got the miracle job the miracle baby came you and the baby well babies are not in hell i'll talk about that there are no babies in hell there are small children but no babies in hell i will tell you that when we talk about the assurance of salvation I want to ask you a question right now is your name in the book of life please look up I'm asking you a very serious question I'm not asking your neighbor is your name in the book of life I've had another teaching there's no book of life what is all this this Bible is clear God gave people wisdom to interpret it in English to help us what is it about the book of life that you don't understand the bible says books were open i read it last week it said and then another book was open and it was called the book of life it said whoever's name whether you are a preacher with rema if your name is not found in the book of life the bible says you will be cast into the lake of fire please take it seriously that you bear the title apostle and prophet does not take your name to the book of life are you hearing what i'm saying that you can quote genesis to revelation does not put your name in the book of life please take what i'm saying seriously the rapture will happen it will happen even evangelists now hear the nonsense they teach on crusade grounds they gather people and instead of lashing this thing and am I need to enter very well so that those I don't mean condemnation I mean conviction in the days of DL Moody let me tell you something when they preached the power of conviction that left people were caught up and they saw visions of hell at once and they returned they held their seats and they were shivering waiting for the time of altar call but right now when we make altar calls the people are even angry the pastor keeps begging because he's embarrassed he's just saying somebody come the spirit of god is still telling me there's somebody and you are looking at the person they're saying all right if you feel you just want a better life you just things are not working then somebody drowsily comes out as if you are doing the pastor a favor this night if i make altar call those of you who are outside just see it as a relay race as soon as i make the altar call leave your friend and run and just come and stand here because this is about your life i don't ask people to close their eyes when i'm making altar calls i'm not saying if, if you think you can make it i think i have not found a scriptural reason to back it there is no reason to ask somebody to close it's like i say close your eyes i want to drink water or close your eyes i, I want to open my bible why should i close your eyes because you are coming so i will not know you are going to heaven if you don't go i will not see you there once i don't see you there i already know that you didn't make it there are many bible study teachers who are going to hell there are many follow-up committee chairmen who are on their way to hell they just gave them church appointment they will finish drinking beer and do everything and say all right come uh, according to the manual of this church right now now that you are in christ desire the pure milk of the word blah 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 and while you are talking this person has never given his life to christ it's just that he has stayed so long and he has caused so much trouble in the church during the board meeting they said just give him give him let's rest Jesus is coming Jesus is coming this night just forget about your titles 
forget about your ministry forget about the fact that you are married forget about the fact that you are working right now just let everything that is earthbound depart from you for a few minutes and see how empty your life is without jesus christ i can do nothing without you there's no life to me so i need you in my life today this is one of the biggest deception in the body of christ right now there are even people that they pronounce salvation on because of the good deeds they have done to church look at me i will tell you where this error came from remember jesus said whosoever sins you forgive is forgiven remember he said that to his disciples now a lot of men of god or people believe they have the exclusive right to come and tell you i set you free whether you feel the remorse of sin or not whether you are ready to get born again or not pastor i was strolling by a car showroom and i thought that this your suffering let me alleviate it and i bought you a home and you say you will make heaven no it's not a prophecy there is a condition i cannot prophesy the making of heaven to you are you getting what i'm saying many devilish teachings in the body of christ you release people to go to heaven or release them to go to hell by a prophetic pronunciation with no activity on their part you see this is why our altar calls don't last the people do not see a need to come out hallelujah before the people come out we put handkerchiefs here then we put tea or we put something i say just come out and there are counselors waiting with handkerchief to embrace you these people are pressured through life they are not making a sincere decision for jesus christ while they make it to just say okay take the tea and there is a, a little rehab room in the church where you sit down and explain to us all your sorrows i'm not saying don't care for people they say my husband left me he didn't leave any money for the children and they say oh lord strengthen them help them through life may you grant grace and may we all meet in heaven let me tell you that is a recitation it doesn't make any no bearing it does not mean anything some of you have convinced yourself that you are born again after this night you will know that you are not born again you see the reason why jesus said not all of you should presume to be teachers because your judgment will be heavier if you deceive the people that they are saved when they are not saved their yoke will be upon your head see let me tell you listen i'm a young man you think i like shouting like this you think I, I i would have come to teach you about prosperity or dimensions of the anointing and have everybody rejoice some of you are angry because i'm saying this thing now but the problem is you cannot take me to heaven so why should i let your face stop me from preaching the truth god gave me an anointing i opened my big mouth and i said god use me God said, yeah, you mean it? He said, yes, use me. Now he has given me the anointing. If I sit down and say, I don't want to offend Aaron. So let's just say, there are many ways to God, really. The, 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 it just depends on how fast you get there. Jesus said, I am the way. Everybody said the way. Men of God are now teaching that there are many ways, really. <laughs> Heaven is not the road to Abuja. You can follow directly through Zaria. Kaduna, you can follow through Kachia. There are many ways to get there. But when it comes to your eternal salvation, can I tell you something? Whether you are in Hawaii or Dubai or Kuwait or Zaria, the principle of salvation is the same. If Jesus is not in your heart, I guarantee you, you are going to hellfire. Number three. Let's hurry up. 
the third great deception that has come upon the body of Christ now this is where I want to center on for a while is perverted encounters of quote heaven and hell you get my point put a small what do they call it now just put it there perverted encounters perverted encounters of heaven and hell Matthew 24 24 while you open it just pray in tongues I'm about to say something that I believe is going to liberate the body of Christ right now Are you there? Matthew 24. Verse 23. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. 24. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets and shall show great signs take note and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive even the very elect 25 behold i have told you before verse 26 wherefore if they shall say unto you behold he is in the desert go not forth behold he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Look up please. Now. In the early 70s. Because of the renaissance that began to happen to the body of Christ. There were several revivals that started breaking out. Around Europe and then America. Certain people because of their passion. And their quest for God listen to me they were granted certain spiritual encounters now this had happened at various levels in the church age we see that paul had an encounter is that true there, there, there is a record in scripture i think let me start by saying this it is not unscriptural to have a spiritual visionary experience the Bible says in the latter days Joel 2 I shall pour my spirit upon all flesh he said and what your sons and daughters shall prophesy your young men will see visions not a sister visions very serious spiritual activities that are about to be unfolded and then Jesus said when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth and he will show you that means you will see are you following me jeremiah 33 verse 3 says call on to me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things all through scripture abraham had supernatural encounters moses are you following me now had a supernatural encounter Daniel, you list all of them. They had dramatic supernatural encounters. Isaiah, Ezekiel, all of these people. So it's okay to have spiritual encounters. Zechariah, a high priest that was ministering that year, had the angel appear to him. So the encounters of Jesus, hell and heaven is not against the scope of scripture. Are you getting me now? And so several people were granted access. And I'll tell you why God did this. Listen. The Bible says in Ezekiel 18. There's no time. It says, 
the wages of sin he said the soul that sinneth it shall die is that true and that the wages of sin is death and then the bible says that paraphrasing now the prophet speaking he said is it god's desire that a sinner should perish and that he will not return and be delivered so god's desperation for the salvation of mankind god saw the degree of perversion and he saw that whatever needs to be done to help man understand the reality of his eternal destiny are you listening to me and then out of that compassion god began to call certain people into these experiences he appeared to them he showed them heaven he showed them hell they saw their loved ones so that they would come back with powerful messages now listen when this started those who were caught up were not even asking jesus that they wanted to go to heaven are you getting me now back in the 70s he appeared to them and he categorically told them the reason why he appeared to them and he took some of these people to heaven they saw the glories of heaven they saw the angelic they saw a lot of things and then he took them to hell some of them saw their loved ones they saw the different chambers of hell and the they had the opportunity to talk with certain people is that true they came back to this physical realm and you could see the effect on their physical bodies for some of them when they came back they stopped whatever they were doing it took them years to recover because of the the reality of the imprint of what happened to them praise the lord and you can see that their encounter yielded fruits because they were going around evangelizing and teaching people and everything that they taught was not just based on the experience it was based on the word supported by those experiences listen when this strategy started becoming effective from the 80s down to the late 90s satan started perverting it with what i call false spiritual experiences what did i say false spiritual experiences certain people started having beings that were superhumans are you listening to me appear to them and then started bringing messages for them started taking them to astral realms taking them to certain planes that were not pure heaven but because the realm of the spirit is a vast realm are you getting me now some of these people had encounters and they came back with so-called experiences from jesus from hell from planes and you can see that the messages that they brought only ended up bringing fear and condemnation not conviction to the body of christ are you getting me to a point that even those who were born again were now doubting the validity of their salvation they started coming with ridiculous conditions that no human being can fulfill to meet heaven are you getting what i'm saying the devil started mixing these things and i will show you that this is consistent with satan's character the bible says that jesus planted wheat and then in the night what happened satan quietly came and planted tears are you seeing that is scriptural and when the vine dressers came and saw it they said master let's block it and he said no 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 leave it because in in the bit to correct it you may injure the experiences that are true let them grow let the experience mature then you can now start filtering it Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel, when you come 
I happened to stumble across a number of these great articles. One of it disturbed me. It was somebody who was not a believer. And he seemingly died and went to hell. And when he got to hell, the escort that took him to hell, listen to me, started listing almost all the men of God that have labored for the kingdom and died. I, I don't want to begin to mention names, but let your mind grow wild. The, anybody you know that church history has spoken, he said they saw them in hell and that in hell, they began to tell him the names of other preachers who were here in heaven. I mean, in the earth realm, who are also going to hell. And the person brought the article with a loud cry. And they began to write books and publish it around. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to tell you a few things that some people have come back with that they said made people to go to hell. I'll just list them at random. Hallelujah. A lot of people have come back from hell and heaven and said when they went to heaven, Jesus told them, all the ladies wearing trousers are going to hell. All the people who are not covering their hair are going to hell. All the brothers with plenty hair going to hell. All those on jeans going to hell. Anybody that wears a watch that is expensive like this, you are going to hell. Those who do not bring offering in church, going to hell. If you look at a sister and just say, ah, this lady is beautiful. Please don't laugh. I'm not mocking those people. I'm trying to communicate something serious here. Are you following me now? If you have a beautiful church with a nice pulpit and you are organized, it's a sign that God is not with you. If you're a man of God and you have a crowd, there is every probability you are going to hell. If you are rich and you are a millionaire, you are going to hell. So, they came with, if you are wearing bangles, if you wear any nice earring, you are going to hell. If you use cream or a nice perfume, this is a sign you are not serious with the agenda of God. You are going to hell. So, different listen please don't i know that we come from different churches i'm not trying to talk about church at all please get my motive for communicating this and then other people said they went to heaven and saw certain people that were not close to anything god they said they saw them in heaven they were gloriously seated adorned with white robes and now they began to confuse people in the earth realm hallelujah other people also said that they went to hell and they went to rescue others that were in hell and brought them back to life I, I'm, i've read some of these things so these are not hearsays to the extent that they went to begin to mention the names of men of god i've not seen my name in any of the books but who knows who knows very soon somebody now will go and say he saw that they have already written it just finish what you are doing and come back now now listen let me tell you what this will do to a new convert let me tell you what it will do to a new convert if you are looking up to a man of god for spiritual direction are you getting me his spiritual life is serving as an encouragement to push you and they now say that man of god they have already signed the document that is going to hell can i tell you something I want to prove to you scripturally it is impossible to conclude about a man in the earth when he is still alive so that makes that thing a fallacy because the bible says it is appointed unto man once to die after this judgment judgment is not before death hallelujah a lot of people read the bible as story books now go to bookstores and see every kind of divine revelation book by any and everybody listen spiritual encounters do not renew your mind 
your mind is renewed by the word of God visions can be corrupted according to the residue of Babylon that is left in your mind I can prophesy out of an unrenewed mind and miss the spirit because my mind has not come into alignment why will Paul cry and tell the church my little two children of whom I travail until Christ be formed he was talking to believers listen let me tell you something hear me if I am looking for money right now huh, and God opens my eyes I can pervert the gift of the spirit and look at promises account and call your account number and call the name of your father mother and brother and tell you go and withdraw this exact amount is that the amount you are who say it and people will clap that does not mean God said it are you getting me now it the gift may be correct it came from God but because I have not stayed with the spirit to sustain the character that will back that level of spiritual delivery I can pervert it and corrupt it this is how many men of God have entered witchcraft unknowingly because they do not know the word their entire life is supported by spiritual experiences so the day God appears and the day a witch appears they don't know the difference they download the same message and keep contradicting themselves hallelujah perverted encounters many people I know a lady who went to seeming heaven I read her article I think she was an Indian Indian or one of these ladies and she said she saw the Holy Spirit as a woman in fact Ruach was the name now she gave it a Hebrew name and said the Holy Spirit is a woman she brought there is the book there is the book she wrote it the way of the master these guys that do program the way of the wasa they were interviewing one gay man that has become a woman the person said god told him that what he was doing is right do you know that there is a gay bible right now oh yes there is a gay bible to have seen it online people came with revelations you see what this this distorted revelation the bible says even if an angel comes with another gospel he said let him be accursed hallelujah see hear me the lord jesus christ appeared to me are you hearing me i have seen him i have not gone to heaven i have not gone to hell but I've been caught up infinite times to the realm of the spirit. And I can tell you the realm of the spirit has a lot of spiritual planes. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's an atmosphere. Many people, the realms they are going to are astral realms. Everybody say astral realms. They, they, they travel. You hear them say they went to Jupiter. They went to Mars. They went to Pluto. They came with revelation from Pluto. They, they met a deity in Pluto. And, 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 and he told them, we are coming to the earth. And they come back and start teaching according to that which they have learned. Many things are transporting themselves from many foreign demonic realms. And they are finding their way to the body of Christ. Because many people are trying to do the things that they saw. Everybody lift up your Bible. In this jungle of confusion, this is the only correct roadmap to arrive there. Lift your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, lift what you have. So long as it contains the word of God there. Yeah. Say, this is my Bible. It's the truth of God's word. It will never change. It will never be edited. It is truth for eternity. In the name of Jesus. Don't sit down with your Bible. Some of us, the last time we read our Bible was over a month ago. All we keep reading, I believe in reading men of God's books. Don't get me wrong. But where books replace the book?
in our quest for Rema, can I tell you something? I am frankly not impressed when I hear people bring Rema. All I want to know is the degree of its agreeableness with truth because the devil can give Rema. The Bible says the demons know that Jesus is Lord. That means they can give you lecture. By God's grace, I have conducted countless deliverances for people and sometimes these demon spirits begin to shout and manifest and you hear them quoting scriptures more accurate kenny is not around i was praying for a lady hear me i was praying for a lady who came over at my place and as soon as i laid my hands on that lady this lady began to manifest and she was shouting shouting just making noise these demons different voices different kinds of demons were talking this lady was quoting scriptures quoting scriptures and the demon would not go later on the spirit started shouting and he said apostle is it not you that taught in koinonia that we should redeem the time why are you wasting your time on me why don't you concentrate on god's people this is a demon spirit now i will carry that revelation are you seeing now i will say i had from the realm of the spirit that i should not waste my time you you get the point now this is many people use information from deliverances is that true informations that are supplied now listen here is the balance the sincere truth is under god's light everything tells the truth including satan are you getting me under the light of god because the bible says at the mention of his name every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess the truth no one tongue will lie but then the balance is where you stay and begin to receive supply please i'm not criticizing any man of god are you getting my point i'm just communicating to you the truth of god's word if your pastor or you conducts deliverance like that we are learning I believe we are growing as we grow we'll find out more but as far as the word of god shows us at this level i tell you the truth there are not many times that jesus held conversations with demons and where he did that it was to reveal to us certain things like i said if that is a method that has worked for you jesus said whoever is not against us hallelujah whoever is not against us is for us perverted encounters a lot of people have come back with dramatic encounters under certain demonic anointings men of god go for conferences some of them come from covens demonic covens and they seemingly open the heavens over congregations and translate people through magic and astral travels into realms in the spirit and there is a widespread manifestation a man called pastor kim listen to me true story a man called pastor kim i think in one of the asian countries they were having a vigil for 30 days how many days 30 days every night and they were having a lot of genuine spiritual encounters but every time the people had the encounters they went to the pastor the pastor was a pastor indeed not this kind of our pastor they 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 earned the right to be called spiritual leaders based on their commitment and their sacrifices and hear me this is what happened and it shocked me one of the innocent ladies said as they were praying because they had appearances, visible appearances that like an angel will appear right now and up to 10, 20 people will see the person. It is possible. While they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost spoke to them, not to one person, to them. They had him, all of them, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. So the Holy Ghost can speak expressly to people from scripture. Hallelujah. Then what happened? This lady, listen, in the heat of the prayer they were having experiences the next thing a seeming jesus listen please a seeming jesus appeared to the lady and came and said i am the lord jesus are you getting me 
And when she looked, because the pastor had trained them to discern spirits. Are you seeing a good pastor? Not that he will discern for them and take the glory as a geo. He has trained the members to discern spirits. He has drilled the church to be strong and manifest as the church indeed. So, while the lady was looking at Jesus, although she was seeing a picture of a seeming Jesus, she said in her spirit, that light, there was no connection. Are you getting me? Deep was not calling on to deep. And the Jesus was telling her, come. I am Jesus, come. And she looked. Immediately, she was comparing his experience with many that have happened in scripture. Because every time he's called the prince of peace. So if he appears, there should be the atmosphere that characterizes his presence. But there was turbulence in her spirit. Hallelujah. Immediately she looked at him. And then she said she just looked at him. And she called her pastor. And they looked at him. And the pastor laughed. And she just said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. That seeming Jesus changed immediately into a big ugly beast and disappeared. That would have been another movement founded now. Is that true? He would have called and said, now, the things that I speak unto you, write. I want to show you another dimension of power. Every time you want my power to move, Tell the people to cut wheel four times and touch Pastor William's right hand and all kinds of devilish movements arise from seeming encounters. Hear me, church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me, Koinonia. Let me tell you, do not reject supernatural experiences because God is still in the business of doing it. But the Holy Spirit in this day and time must become your best friend. Are you getting me? It is the spirit together with the bride that will tell the world to come. If you never have any spiritual experience in your life, it does not make you less spiritual. Are you getting me? A lot of pastors have taught. Now they rank people in church according to those who see visions. And everybody come with every kind of junk. You go and see time for prayer meetings. And you see everybody. Praise the Lord. I saw something. What did you see, my brother? Tell us. I saw something. I saw my man. I was in a place. And when I was standing there, I saw my man. And then Pastor Jake, you will never say anything wrong against him because you. And then Pastor Jake spoke to him and said, My man, come, I will do this. And you waste people's time telling them lies. A lot of people lie on it. They didn't go anywhere. They didn't see those they said they saw. They said, And the angel told me to do. Let me tell you, hear me. See, if an angel appears right now, the moment I see him, none of you here will be able to stand again. You may not see him, but you will feel his effect. This is how spiritual things work. Let me prove it to you. When Jesus appeared to Saul, they did not see him, but all of them fell at once. The moment spiritual things materializes to one person, there will be an effect. That's why notice when I'm ministering to people and I hold their hands, the moment that I see the demon in the spirit and I say, I see you. You see the person start manifesting. There must be a reaction in this realm. These are spiritual laws. See, ask yourself this night whether you are ready for ministry. My brother, this hurry, some of you are hurrying with all what I'm sharing now. Ask yourself whether you are ready for ministry because some of you right now are just waiting for strike to finish let you just graduate and go and confuse people. Some of you have gone to one Bible college, one school of ministry here, which is nice. And you just believe that by it, you are qualified. It takes a spirit to qualify a man. The Bible says he has made us able ministers. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. You must eat this Bible. If you want to represent Christ. Are you hearing me? Stay with the word. Respect men of God. Honor them. But value the Bible more than any man. Including myself. When I become more important to you than the word of God. I have become an idol. 
Are you hearing me? As powerful as Koinonia message is, let it keep blessing you. But I love God because most of the testimonies that come here are on account of the word. Not necessarily just prophecies or, or that, okay, this and that happened. The reason why the messages go is because of the word of God that, that is contained in it. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace and discernment to detect wrong experiences. Now very quickly, write. I want to show you how do you test spirits? How do you test experiences? We're going to round up now and we'll pray. I thought we'll be able to finish because I need to teach on assurance of salvation. If we cannot touch that, no problem. We'll touch on it briefly before we enter a new topic next week. If somebody comes right now and says, Joshua Selman, I think you're going to hell. I'm not even going to pray about it. I'll just tell the person, I appreciate your opinion. You can know. Some of you don't know. That's why right now, after this hot message, you have come out for many altar calls. So you even came out last week. If I call now, you will still come out. Which may be necessary. If it's necessary, come out. But the truth is, many people come out of altar calls because of uncertainty. When the message is too hot, you tell yourself prevention is better than cure. <laughs> At least God will not drive me. Let me just come out. So that if I've done it wrongly somewhere, let me do it correctly now. Have you been blessed this night? This should not make you go and start mocking people. And say you, what nonsense is your own pastor teaching like this? No. You don't become matured like that. It's not for you to carry the word and say, now nah, for you, if this is what you are getting here, I'm sorry for you. Mm -mm. The, the word of God makes you become like Christ. It should project in you the spirit of love and appreciation for the body of Christ. Our ultimate goal is to give you a kingdom mindset, not a koinonia mindset. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. Hallelujah. How do you test spirits? Number one. Every activity in the kingdom must be consistent with the written word of God. Whether preaching, whether teaching, whether prophesying, every activity in the kingdom must be consistent with the written word of God. That means if I come to prophesy to you or I teach you and it's not consistent with the universal character of truth, reject it. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. Is that true? It said whether there be tongues, they will pass away. Whether there be prophecies, they will pass away. But the word of the Lord abides forever. So whatever is being done, if I come to prophesy to you right now, whether it's a good prophecy or a bad prophecy number one you must judge the character of the man delivering it are you following me now if i am angry with pastor femi and god gives me a word for him do you know that most likely my prophetic word will be perverted because it's not flowing from the spirit of love so even where god has stopped the prophecy another spirit will take over and I will say something else that God did not say. That's why you must minister in love. 
Number two, the Bible says, this is how you know the spirit that is of God and the spirit of error. He said, every spirit that does not say Jesus is Lord, every spirit. What scripture is that? First John. I think first John. Let's find it. It's important. We'll find it and then we'll pray. As you open it, begin to pray in tongues. Who has found it? Four verse. Verse one. Thank you. Good Bible students. 4 verse 1, 1 John some of you have no hope of opening anything you have never ever opened it you don't even know that it's there take your bible study serious I, I saw some of you it was everybody open now some of you say ah, let me quietly close my bible I don't even know where First John is change change we don't condemn you First John chapter 4 verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many what false prophets are gone into the world. What's the litmus test? Verse 2. By this know ye the spirit of God. He said, Every spirit that confesses. That Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Verse 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist of which ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is in the world. Listen. When you are about to test spirits, whatever spirit that does not acknowledge the ministry that Jesus came to do. He said, every spirit that does not confess that Christ is come in the flesh. Why did he come in the flesh? Great is the mystery of godliness. That Christ, God, became flesh. Is that true? He died for people to redeem them. That means any prophetic word that will not ultimately lead to your redemption and to your salvation is a fallacy and is of the devil. There are few judgments in scripture that are called the written judgment. They are written because nobody will pray them away. For instance, nobody will pray sinners out of hellfire. It's a written judgment. Is that true? Nobody will pray the tribulation away. The tribulation is coming. It's a written judgment. Nobody will pray away the doom of Satan. We can come together and say Satan has caused too much problem in the world. Let's pray. Let God have mercy on him and so that we will rest. No. It's a written judgment. Psalms 149 talks about the written judgment. But as long as a human being, listen, listen please. If I am a man of God today, and I walk to Mike and I say, Mike, your case, there's no hope again. Are you getting me? You, you are going to hell. There is no case. This is a perversion. It's not the spirit of God. Because there is hope for the living. He who is just, so long as you are alive. Are you getting me? The condition, listen please. There is still a condition for you to be alive. And it will be a hopeless condition. Let me tell you that. It is called when you have a reprobate mind. The Bible says a time came when God himself was weary and it repented God that he made men. Is that true? The Bible begins to talk of certain people who, whose conscience has been seared with hot iron. There are people today that even if Jesus Christ walks in Zaria for 100 days physically, they will look at him and say, Jesus, yeah, where from again? I thought you came here yesterday, but they will not repent. Because Jesus walked for 33 years. They saw him. Some even escorted him and watched at the cross. They still died and went to hell. 
there were two sinners by his left and his right. Is that true? One of the sinners went to hell. One of the sinners went with him in paradise. You are the spirit of God. I feel your touch in my life. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'll give you three points. What did I say? The first point is testing spirits. It must be consistent with the universal character of the word of God. Listen, because of our personality differences as preachers and the vessels of delivering the word of God, you can see a man of God who is very quiet. There are some of you that a man of God is quiet does not make him genuine. It's just his personality. There are other people like me who can be talkative. Blah, 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 blah. I say, Kai, this guy is talking too much. Like, like this is not of God. If it's of God, he will be quiet. No. You don't judge spiritual things by people's personality. Elijah was a temperous person. Are you getting me? He called down fire at once. He didn't even waste time. There were other emotional prophets like Jeremiah who were always crying. Is that true? They were called weeping prophets. It was him that wrote lamentations. He was lamenting, lamenting. There were certain disciples that were as hard as a rock. Nothing moved them. But there were others who were soft. One of them was John the Beloved. There were some who were just less as fair. All these other names in the Bible that the Bible doesn't record. They were dear, but they were not dear. They were just... Let's go out fishing. I'm going. Come follow me. They still came. You know, just there are some Christians like that. So personalities differ. <laughs> There's a man of God. Every time I watch on TV, I almost laugh. That guy can speak almost 120 words per minute. I've never. The day he was talking with his wife, I didn't know it was introduction. Is that also? I said, You have introduced your wife. But he's a very sound man of God. Very sound man of God. There are others who take one hour. You need to fight sleep and open your eyes like this. Open your eyes. Before you understand. But regardless of how it is. Discern what they are saying in light of truth. Are you getting me? Number two. No, I'm, 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 we're reviewing. What's the second point? Yes. That does not say Christ has come in the flesh. In other words, every truth of God's word must point men towards redemption. Any kind of redemption. Whether redemption from their predicament, redemption from ignorance, redemption from eternal loss. God is a redemptive person. Are you following me now? So if I just tell you, I say, Tolu, I see disaster coming to your house. Or I see that somebody in your house wants to kill somebody. That's an incomplete prophecy. Because there is no redemptive aspect of that prophecy. Are you getting me? So I have a right to dump that prophecy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The third one. And I'll round up with this. Now do an altar call and we'll pray. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? It must bring three things. Three things in the lives of people there. That's the third point. Number one, it must reveal the love of God. It must not bring condemnation and it must bring hope. Love, lack of condemnation and hope. See, listen. God does not condemn, but he also does not condone. Are you getting me now? Condemnation is different from conviction. What the Holy Ghost does is conviction. What men do is condemnation. God will not condemn you, but it does not mean he will allow you. If I speak to you right now, and you sense that what I'm saying is coming from the heart of love, 
if God shows me, for instance, that this brother has been sleeping around, and I just come and look at him, and I just wind my hand, I say, I've been wasting my time in Koinonia here talking. I just give him a dirty slap. I say, come here, come, come and kneel down here. You know, churches have become paramilitary right now. We humiliate God's people because they sign our membership register. And I give him a dirty slap. I say, so, whose wife have you been sleeping with? Come and stand here. Whose wife have you been sleeping with? This is not the manifestation of the spirit of Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? If God has revealed to me, assuming for instance, this is your wife and you have been sleeping around, I will apply the wisdom of God's word because the kingdom of God is not in word but in righteousness, peace. That means I will not wreck your family in an attempt to reveal something to you. Are you getting me? I rather call, that's why sometimes you see me talk to away. I take the mic away because of the sensitive things I'm telling them. I heard of a story of one zealous man of God whose wife, she, a preacher's wife has been sleeping around in a church. He's a prophet, a true prophet. But this guy that you mismanage the anointing does not mean you are not genuine. It's just that you are not matured and it can lead to perversion. Which is not the character of the spirit. True story it happened in Abuja. The man just looked at the pastor's wife and started piecing everything that was happening in the church. Called her out. Called some of the brothers, the deacons, the helpers in the church who are helping the pastor and all the people. You see, it caused more chaos in the church than redemption. There are many men of God that do this. This is not the spirit of Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, that does not mean to condone. Are you getting me? But the Bible says, do not rebuke an elder publicly. There are scriptural guidelines. I would rather call them and say, okay, I want to see you with your wife. Or mama, I want to see you. This is what the Lord is showing me. And I think it's good that you work on this, this and that and that area. Some of you have had the F13. To send text messages to men of God. Hello sir. The Lord is showing me you are not being serious with your life. You are just pretending. Your days are numbered. I speak as a child of God. Send. You are not matured. You think it's spiritual maturity. Or you hear a hot message like this. You just go and say daddy. Time has come to stop sleeping with all these women. I will not keep quiet again. If you like, kill me. Send. Your father will beat you and drive you out of the house. Spiritual things must be approached with wisdom. That's why Jesus met with the centurion because he was a noble man and they talked one on one. Nobody had that case again. There are people today I counsel because they are men of God and the status they have. Sometimes they come, they have fallen or done something. You will never hear it from my mouth anywhere. It must bring love. There are many people that cannot go and meet a man of God for counseling because of what they have done. Many people rather go and meet other pastors than meet their men of God because they know if I tell the pastor I did this. The past Now this it can be annoying. Let me tell you the truth. You don't know what it means to stand here every week and be lashing it out. Some of you just keep looking like this as you are looking your mind is already thinking of the bad things you go and do. So it can be frustrating. However, it is at that point we will see how much of the spirit of Christ. If you are so full of the Holy Spirit that you are prophesying and it's not leading to love and discipline, something is wrong. The same Holy Spirit who operates in you so strongly should manifest his character too so strongly in you. Is that true? These three litmus tests. Test every word. As you go browsing, when you see revelations, test them. If you don't believe them, don't condemn the man of God. Don't go and write any article against any man of God and quote me. Praise God. Perversion. This one is on rampage. And it must stop. We are going to pray this night. Many of our family members started misbehaving the day one prophet came to their house and told them something about seeming heaven and hell. They just confused. I know I counseled a, a family like that. Something happened around the family and they brought some devilish teachings. 
to the point that it started affecting their mother. Rise up on your feet. Everybody inside and outside, please stand on your feet. Please, all of you, just close your eyes in one minute. Inside and outside, just close your eyes in one minute. I want to talk to you now. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And Jesus is coming soon. One day, the trumpet will sound. And I tell you the truth from my heart. There are many people who have not made it right with God. Some of you are inside this auditorium right now. Some of you are outside. Some of you may be men of God. Next week I will touch on the conditions for salvation. And the assurance of salvation. And will answer the question, can a man lose his salvation? Hallelujah. But right now, you have heard the word of the Lord. As you're standing outside or inside, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and saying it's time to make your ways right. Some of you have never made this decision. Every time you hear preachers preach it, you keep laughing. Let me tell you something. Heaven is real. Jesus is coming soon. A day will come, this life will pack up. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord. But you found yourself backsliding. You really derailed from the things of God. Now is the time to make up your mind. I know there are many of you outside. Some of you were invited. You just strolled with your friends. The Lord wants to give you a new beginning. Any other thing we teach that is relevant in time is only relevant if your eternal salvation is guaranteed. As you are standing, hearing my voice in Koinonia this night, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. No matter how many times you have come out, even if you came out last week and you think what you did was just play, I want you to make a decision for Jesus Christ. As the worship team begins to sing all oh, the blood of Jesus, I want you to leave wherever you are and run and come and kneel down here. I'm going to count one to ten. Hallelujah. As I count one to ten, do not let the devil stop you. The devil wants you to go to hell. As I begin to count, I want you to rush out right now. One. Two. Run out. There are many of you. You are welcome. Run and come and kneel down. Run and come and kneel down. Leave your seat and run. Three. No power will stop you. Keep coming. Don't let your friends stop you. There is heaven and there is hell. Four. Keep coming. No matter how far you are, keep coming. Keep coming. you god bless you god bless you god bless you this is your redemption from hell five it was in one of stone six keep coming there are still more people outside there are still more people outside don't let the devil rob you of this opportunity the lord is ministering to me there are still more people outside some of you are afraid of your friends the friends that you came with they will go to heaven and leave you behind I want you to leave your seat right now and come. Leave your seat and come. There are a number of you outside. The Lord is ministering to me. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Begin to come right now. Eight. Leave your seat and begin to come. 
begin to come. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Eight. Shake up a Balala. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't let no devil stop you. Keep coming. For the salvation of your soul. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Nine. There's one more count and we are done. The door is still open. The door is narrow, but it's open. I salute all of you that took the bold step to come out. And should in case you are in the crowd and the Holy Ghost is speaking to you right now, you can still run and come and join them. There's no need to be afraid. Nobody condemns you. This is a family. We are genuinely interested in your salvation. Those of you who are here, lift your hands and begin to talk to the Lord with your own words. God brought you out here. Lift your hands. Take it seriously. Begin to talk to the Lord. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Those in the congregation, stretch your hands and pray for them. Stretch your hands and pray for them. A harvest for the kingdom. Because you invited them, they will not go to hell. Look at them crying. Look at people crying genuinely. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I one more time. I believe. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. The Bible says, Whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Lift your hands high above your head. I'm about to lead you. To make the greatest prayer you will ever make in your life you have prayed for prosperity you have prayed for health but now you will pray the greatest prayer with every sense of sincerity in your heart the lord jesus is in this place i'd like you to say after me lord jesus i believe in you i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for me I accept that I'm a sinner but tonight I've heard your word I don't want to go to hell I don't want to live a miserable life on earth therefore I come to you my Savior my King my Lord I repent of all my sins I receive cleansing and I receive eternal life into my spirit from today i'm a child of god from today my name is in the book of life wash me with your precious blood i denounce sin and satan the power of sin is broken over my life from today forward ever backward never in the name of Jesus. 
keep your hands lifted let me pray for you father you have brought these ones by the power of your holy spirit they have heard your word tonight and they have made a genuine commitment my god and my king i pray let this be the beginning of a genuine journey into mighty things make them mighty men and women of god in the name of jesus christ we receive you into the greatest and the biggest family the biggest family the very family of faith in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit celebrate god for them we welcome you we welcome you we welcome you hallelujah now pastor jakes is going to have a meeting with you tomorrow by 5 p.m please and please it's important that we follow you up and guide you all right just help you to know what it is that you need to do from here pastor jakes the venue the venue is going to be chapel just by the book stand please make it if you invited anyone here please encourage them hallelujah so that they will have a meeting with pastor jakes will get you filled with the holy spirit and will guide you on the foundational truths of the kingdom hallelujah the lord preserve you now please rise up gloriously follow the ushers they will have your names and your details will contact you and will meet with you koinonia celebrate them celebrate them we will see them in heaven someday hallelujah hallelujah now listen hallelujah i'm declaring from today until next week thursday a prophetic time of evangelism are you hearing that i'm going to pray for you that the unction of the spirit will come upon you are you hearing me i want you to take many of you you can go in groups you can go individually evangelism in your room in your home if you cannot preach invite them are you getting me throughout this week i will do it everybody don't condemn people don't create a subject of argument there is nothing to argue about you are going to go with the power of the holy ghost we have taught you here as you go you will heal the sick as you go you will cast out devils you will demonstrate the authority of the kingdom i'll do that just before we round up right now let me take those who are worshiping with us for the first time if this is your first time worshiping with us in koinonia we love you we celebrate you inside and outside no matter how far you are i'd like you to leave your seat and come out quickly we want to bless and speak a word of prophecy god bless you you are welcome god bless you, you are welcome appreciate them appreciate them if this is your first time don't remain behind don't be ashamed outside there are a lot of you you're welcome keep coming keep coming god brought you to bless you god brought you to bless you this is not all some of you are ashamed keep coming we have a blessing for you jesus son of god i believe in you I believe in you. Thank you so much for coming, every one of you. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. And our goal here is to build people, to bring them into a place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. To teach you the principles of the kingdom so that you will go and be an ambassador. You will represent the government of heaven here in the earth. Thank you so much for coming. We love you. We truly appreciate every single one of you. Hallelujah. And we want to pray for you right now. Listen, we are anointed. If we bless you, you are blessed. Saints of God, stretch your hands as we bless them. Remember, you have the anointing. Stretch your hands and speak over their lives. We bless you with the blessings of the heavens. We command that you are strengthened. We bless you with the spirit of prayer. The Lord strengthens you. You are mighty upon the earth and you are relevant even in the spirit. 
may the lord bless you every sickness in your body will curse it right now every oppression of darkness every door that is closed against you we command that you will go back and find it open in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah thank you so much for coming once again now i'd like you to just follow the ushers they will have your details and they will welcome you more warmly on our behalf god bless you thank you the lord bless you just follow the ushers follow the gentleman waving his hands and they will direct you thank you so much hallelujah praise the lord the announcements please hallelujah now before we take the announcements i want you to lift your hands i want to speak over your life and release grace upon you koinonia is a place where we raise mighty men it's not a place where men see a mighty man hallelujah every one of you will be involved in evangelism many of you for the first time you will see yourself flowing in the gifts of the spirit this week hallelujah do we need to meet in the evening is there any need hallelujah is there any need okay you are saying yes that means you will come not at chapel there what will happen is the evangelism is not for evening are you getting me now the evangelism is for is for from this night right now huh till evening do we do that jakes sorry one minute let me just consult with the evangelist okay praise god now this is it get them born again by yourself all right every evening from tomorrow night from from five pastor jakes will be there sometimes i'll be there you are going to bring them and get them filled with the holy ghost by yourself listen if any one of them says they are sick you are going to pray for them if you pray and it does not happen we'll help you but now this is practicum see school of ministry students laughing hallelujah praise god so every one of you is a man and a woman you are declared a man and a woman of god this week are you hearing me don't tell me from now till next friday you cannot win at least two people no matter how stubborn they are depend on the ability of the holy ghost share with them your own experience hallelujah everyone be involved young or old be involved do you believe that lift up your hands so when you get them born again invite them by five o'clock we'll be there in the chapel we'll talk to them you get them born again if they are sick pray for them expect miracles flow in the anointing flow in the word of knowledge make your mistakes don't worry don't worry if you make your mistakes hallelujah if you don't know what to say just talk the bible says when you stand before them you shall not think of what to say in that very hour it will not be you speaking but the spirit of your father lift your hands let me pray for you hallelujah i prophesy father we are declaring by the leading of the spirit that this week we are going to depopulate hell and populate heaven in the mighty name of jesus and i pray right now by the power of the holy spirit that grace to move in the supernatural grace to evangelize with power power evangelism evangelism through the operation of the gifts of the spirit receive it now in the name of jesus christ many of you will bring back a mighty harvest of people some of you your loved ones that have refused to get born again this is their week of salvation finally in the name of the lord jesus christ i release you to flow in the prophetic i release you to flow in miracles i release you to flow in the gifts of the spirit i release you to flow in the prosperity that will bring the harvest in the mighty name of jesus christ dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye
pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord 